I've just found a new YouTube channel which I might add to my subscribers list I haven't decided yet, I've only just found it and it reminded me of something I wanted to talk about very briefly she was posting a thing about how she'd been away for two weeks, come back and she'd left the washing up before she went away and the thing that I wanted to talk about was about what I've noticed since I started doing cleaning work because I've never thought of myself as house proud I don't have like a cleaning day I will do things as and when they get to the point where I have to do them um, which actually isn't too bad because I will still run the hoover around every week and I don't have like a kitchen cleaning day I clean up at the end of every day I cannot imagine anything worse than going to bed at night, getting up in the morning and the cooker is still covered in food and oil and God knows what else. I've got a real thing about kitchens, which is why I don't do well in house shares because I've lived with some of the filthiest people I've ever come across in my life. Um, I'm not perfect and some of my not doing household chores is a money thing so laundry I will leave it as long as possible to do the laundry because it costs electricity it costs water it costs laundry products and of course you've got to find somewhere to put that washing and that's much harder now that we are in cold times so there are things that I will try and avoid doing as much as possible um, but basic keeping cleaning is one of the things that I do and I mentioned not so long ago about the one-off clean I did. The house looked like a tip. Um, I'm assuming that the cleaning, the cleaning that I did for that particular household was a one-off because their regular cleaner wasn't around. But then I looked at it and thought, how long had you been living with your kitchen like that? And the couple that I regularly clean for now, the elderly couple who haven't had a cleaner in a while and can't do anything themselves, I appreciate that it's probably been quite tough, but um, I'm still, like, I've been cleaning for them for, I think, over a month now. It's got to be over a month. And I'm still trying to get it back down to a basic level of maintenance cleaning. I've got a lot of it under control, but I like I need to get some special chemicals to do the oven, or not even the oven. It's it's the top of the oven, so they've got the lift off metal, um, the metal bits that you put on the gas hob that you clean, and they are thick with grease. I'm I'm talking. I don't even know where to start. So I need to find was well, some miracle. If anybody's got a miracle. Um, for getting that off it is thick and I think I'm going to have to get some kind of spray combination put them both out in the garden spray it with this stuff and leave it because I don't even want to touch it all the kitchen units you put your hands on them and you get stuck to them because the grease that has come up off um, you know the cooker hob you know where it all kind of rises into the air has just been monumental it's taken me too clean so I, I go in and I clean and if I've got time at the end of a regular clean I'll do something else that needs to be tackled but needs more time so for the last two weeks I've had about half an hour 45 minutes at the end of each clean and I've been scrubbing those kitchen units and I'm still not there yet and it's made me realize that I'm more house proud and more cleanly than I thought I was and it amazes me how much dirt people will live with before they have to do anything about it and the thing is I don't like cleaning I don't enjoy it but I know that once it's done things feel nicer and it makes you feel nicer so when I've been going in and doing these cleans and of course I'm getting paid for them so that makes things feel better but when I go in and do these cleans when I see the difference at the end it makes me feel better because I know that when I next go back there it's not as much of a job and it really does make a difference mentally so if you're 
like I know that some people really struggle struggle with mental health situations, but if you're living in your own place and you're managing your own place and you're putting off tasks and things as simple as you know changing the bed sheets or doing the washing up it's amazing how just making yourself do those things feels like an accomplishment that's worth enjoying and particularly when it's just keeping your own home clean so i think um I felt a little bit of a mental uplift from doing all this cleaning work and of course i get paid for it so that's different but um, it does make me look a little bit more critically at my own home. And I do tend to, I'm looking more carefully at the corners and um, like skirting boards and things and seeing where the dust gathers where you probably don't look. So I'm looking up at the corners and see if there's any cobwebs in the corners and things like that. But I've realised I'm not as bad as I thought I was. So that's... Uh, that's been a plus point this week because <laughs> I've realised I'm more house trained than I thought I was and I certainly didn't think that was going to happen. Today is Sunday. It's the morning. Uh, Sundays are now traditionally when I go over and do the cleaning for the two businesses. It doesn't make any difference to me what day I have off. Um, I don't tend to do a traditional Monday to Friday working week anyway. So I've got used to Saturday being a day when I get stuff done and then Sunday being like a shop day and going and doing the cleaning because Sunday mornings can be quite good in Morrison's. <clears throat> so I've taken to go into Morrison's first and then go in and doing the cleaning. I have an added incentive today because one of my survey sites is offering £15 for me to go in and do um, a five minute review of one very specific aisle in my supermarket. And these come up every so often with this particular um, survey site which is called Bulbshare. They're quite good. They do a lot of um, surveys where you don't get paid but they can lead to paid work if you fit the criteria. You get a lot where it'll pay you a pound or two pounds for your opinion, which is a better pay per minute than it is for most of the other survey sites, but they don't come up as often. And then every so often you'll get things like this, where you'll be asked to go into a certain aisle, um, upload a couple of videos of the aisle, talk about what you think about the layout and the products available, that sort of thing. Because they work with a lot of brands and presumably a lot of supermarkets and things like that. So if I get that right, which I should do because I normally do, that'll be £15 and then I will walk back across the road and do my clean. Um, because I'm waiting for Morrison's to open, it means I'm probably not going to be back home until about 2 o'clock. So that's pretty much going to be my Sunday. It's actually Remembrance Sunday today and I tend not to go to things. Um, but because I'm well versed in my genealogy, I know about some of the people who fought in the war, World War One and World War Two, and I don't really need a special day to think about that because these people have a habit of popping into my mind on a regular basis. Um, yeah, so I won't be too worried about that. They normally do a parade here in the local streets. I don't know what's happening this year. I think there is something coming around because I've seen the litter man and the little street sweep has been round tidying up. So there must be something coming around. But it may be that when I'm up doing my cleaning, I can see them from the upstairs windows because it's quite a high building. So we'll see what we can do. It's always really nice when they do the display here because all the kids from the local bands will come together and there's about seven or eight of them and they've all got their branded things and their flags and they play their musical instruments and um, it looks really good actually but it kind of comes through and then it's gone and that's it so I would imagine the local churches will be doing services as well so that'll be nice that's a, a focused Sunday for people um, but yeah so Sunday is busy busy I'm just getting ready I'm actually dressed underneath here with my stuff for cleaning and I'm just um, finishing my coffee 
and giving my phone an extra charge so that it can do the, the survey because I forgot to charge it overnight and I've got like 10% on my phone and then I shall go and that will be my most of my Sunday I suppose Not sure what the quality of this will be like. We'll give it a go. <clears throat> I don't usually shoot at night because my camera's rubbish. I've had to use my regular mobile because the old one that I use for most of my videos is my old Samsung Galaxy Ace 3, which I stopped using in 2019, I think. And I just use it as a camera now. But uh, it's way out of date and the camera's pretty dreadful most of the time. Shooting this video with this camera is near darkness. I'm using a Galaxy S7 now. Which I suspect in the next year or so is going to have to go. Because the software isn't being updated. Um... It's uh, it's about half past five on Sunday evening. It's really cold. I haven't given in to putting the heating on yet, but we are doing about 12, 13 degrees in the flat. Um, this pretty much is <laughs> how I will look from about five o'clock every day now until probably March when the weather starts to change. It's a real hibernation thing. Underneath here I'm wearing the faulty electric vest that I got for my dad. I'm waiting to hear back from the seller about getting a replacement. And although it's faulty it kind of warms up for a bit so I'm using it with the power bank which is okay. So I've got it on underneath, over my two jumpers, underneath my dressing gown, and it just takes the edge off. It's weird because it's really cold during the day. Now I've got the curtain shut and everyone's home and everyone's put their heating on because I'm surrounded by other flats. Once I get to about nine o'clock this evening, I will have warmed up. I've also got um, my hot water bottle on my lap underneath my slang kit. And I'm actually just starting to thaw out because I've just had dinner. I had a warm dinner tonight and I've got my cup of tea. Which weirdly has coconut alpro in it, which I thought was going to be horrible. And actually it's not too bad. Still got my tea bag in though. So yeah, I will sit on here or sometimes lengthways with the hot water bottle underneath my legs and just thaw out and then by a certain time in the evening I've warmed up enough that it's just not quite so cold. I've got the laptop there, I'm watching YouTube videos. I did all my cleaning today, I did my bulb share survey so hopefully I've earned some money from that and this is kind of life now until spring and I really hate it I'm so tired this evening I sleep better in winter I have to say I can just sleep almost all the way through in winter it's a proper semi hibernation oh my goodness to move you closer. I need to trim my fringe. Tomorrow morning I've got to be up early because I'm off to Persia to get my headlights sorted. I'm not looking forward to that early 
it's not even an early start actually I'll probably be awake before the alarm goes off but um, it's the going out early having to be dressed and up and out at a sensible time when it's so cold but the plus is free heating in the car and then free heat and free cappuccinos whilst I wait for my headlight to be done so and it gets me out I'm going to go to Sainsbury's on the way back because there are some bits that I want to get and I have I have that big gift card to you so it won't have to cost me any money I found another new YouTube channel. It's called Live It Like Lauren. And it's exactly what I was talking about the other day about, you know, really straightforward, down to earth, real life human beings just getting on with life. And I've only just found the channel. It's episode 22. So I don't know how long it's actually been running. Um, I think I've dropped an episode into the for the subscribers playlist and it's just so nice to see normal human beings just getting on she has a really good sense of humor though so it does give me a chuckle and she kind of talks about nothing and everything but it's the way she delivers it it's just so good she should be a stand-up comedian honestly but um oh god it's not even six o'clock and I feel ready for bed. I don't know matter with me today. I think I'm going to start this again tomorrow. I will probably do something in the car. I will be a little more chipper tomorrow, I think. So, it's good night, I think. And that's probably quite enough. Good night. It's Monday morning. 9 a.m. It's early for me to be out. Actually, it's quite mild out, which is nice. As you can tell, obviously I'm in my car. We are heading off to the garage. I'm going to get my headlight fixed. Unless there's a major problem, it'll be a while I wait. So I will I've got my phone with me and I'm just going to um, just do surveys and read the news and stuff. Hopefully it won't take any more than a couple of hours. They've got a nice coffee machine, toilets, all the things you could possibly want. So, ooh, sunshine. So, yeah, so I'm going to do that. And that will keep us nice and safely and legally on the road, which will be lovely. There's nothing that irritates you more than a headlight out. And after that, gosh, look at this traffic. After that, I am going to go to Sainsbury's. I have a long list of things that I want to either get or try and get with my gift card. Um, and normally I'd walk down, I'd use it as a way of walking, getting my steps in, but it's easy for me to pass Sainsbury's on the way home. And although it's sunny now, weather's really weird. It's really mild. It's windy and I've heard there's another storm on the way and it's supposed to tip it down later. So I don't want to get drowned. I have a new Yankee candle thing put up in my car, which I forgot and left in my pocket. We like the car to smell nice. Get some warmth in there. Warmer outside than in my flat today. Although it did 
haven't seen quite as bad this morning. Do people like watching vlogs of people driving? I quite like them. People nattering on their morning commutes or just while they're out and about doing stuff. I don't drive around very much. Um, this is a rare going out occasion. Although I now go out once a week, which is pretty cool. So I have once a week opportunities to do driving vlogs. but I'll have to chop out the silent bits because I've run out of things to say now. It's too early in the morning for talking. I'm just gazing into the distance as I sit in a traffic jam. Oh dear, the heat's making me tired. Headlight done. I had to take the entire unit out of the car. <laughs> it's been in there for 11 and a half years and all the screws had seized up and they couldn't get the thing out and that's why I like to uh, take it straight into the main dealer because these things always happen. Um, it's alright, 26 quid. It'll probably outlive the car now because I think this is probably the only, sec only the second time I've had a bulb done for this car. Anyway, so yeah, that's all that done. Oh, it's chilly. So now I'm off to Sainsbury's. I have my gift card, so it's not going to cost me any actual money. But, um, I need to have a little shop around. I'm not entirely sure everything that I'm getting. And if I spend 20 quid, I get two pounds off with nectar points. And looking at the things I could buy today, I might hit that 20 quid. We'll have a look. We'll see what happens. Right, I am back from my Sainsbury shop and I really messed up. I had a two pound off voucher through the nectar app and I forgot to scan it at the checkout. So I paid 2019 for my shopping deliberately to get it above the 20 quid that I needed and then forgot to scan the blooming thing. So I've got three days to either go back and spend another 20 quid to get two quid off or lose it. Anyway, everything I've bought is stuff that I will use. So it doesn't really matter. I just bumped up a few extra things to make it up to the 20 quid. Anyway, so 20 pound 19 got some deals. Ah, also bear in mind that I bought all this shopping on a Sainsbury's gift card so I wouldn't spend anything anyway. Uh, two things on the Shop Me map. Buy one, get one free on noodles. They're only 65 pence each, but one is free. And I keep a stash of like dry noodles for emergencies. Also, I really love corned beef. Now this isn't free, this is half price, so I got £1.75 back on this. But because I've used a gift card, I effectively haven't paid for it anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. So that means that on my gift card I've cashed back in £1.75 and 65p. I also got some nectar points. Um, the coffee I think was 90p, it was 90 points. 
which is about 40p and the potatoes I think were about 40 points so the best part of a quid back in that anyway I wanted to buy um, mints like beef or pork mints it's so expensive now they don't have like the Stamford Street the really cheap version in my Sainsbury's so it will be the next version up which will be the Sainsbury's own brand and 500 gram bag is like nearly six quid I am not paying that um, other things that I got two of those peanut butter crunchy peanut butter I always use peanut butter it's one of my go-to's um, and instead of the mince I bought sausages they were only £1.65 for 20 so um, oh the other thing I got a six pint of milk. Now, most of this year I have been getting free or heavily discounted plant-based milk through my cashback apps. They've pretty much stopped and normally I would only buy milk if it's really heavily discounted. However, I've got this on a gift card. So this was £2.15 and the reason I bought this size is because it really does pay to buy in bulk if you can. So I took some photographs of the other prices of the other milk values and you can see how much per pint um, you are actually saving. And I've also got this because, and I'm going to show you this a bit later in, um, in a separate little post, how to turn this six pinter into even more milk, like double the milk, and then store it so that this will last blooming ages but I'll do that later on um, because it's lunchtime I'm back from um, the main dealer garage I'm back from Sainsbury's it's now just at my lunchtime and I want to make lunch and I'm really hungry so I shall do this later to add also to bump up my 20 pounds that I thought I was going to get a two pound coupon on and forgot um, I bought the first of my Christmas cards I always get my cards in Sainsbury's because they have a really good cheap home range and because I very often get them on gift cards which means I'm not spending any money on cards that I otherwise think are a waste of money pretty much so I've bought uh, the first of my Christmas cards uh, three cards and um, one sympathy card because a friend of mine her dog died at the weekend so I've bought them a little sympathy card uh, so I just meant to hide that in so I'm going to tell you about how you can make your milk go further and I've been doing this for years. Um, when I used to buy milk at full price, it's expensive stuff. So today I've bought this six pint of whole milk. And you can turn this six pint of whole milk into 12 pints of semi-skimmed semi milk simply by putting one pint of milk into a two pint bottle and filling it up with water. That's all you have to do. So this cost me £2.15. And it's basically going to be 12 pints of milk, which is going to last me ages. So one of the things that I have done over the years, and when I used to buy milk, like normal milk, I don't do it very often anymore, is keep the plastic one pint bottles and the two pint bottles. And the one pints are really important if you have limited freezer space. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that they're clean. They're already washed and clean, but they've been stored for a while. So the first thing I'm going to do is to rinse them out with boiling water. And I'm just going to move you down so you can see. So I've boiled my kettle. And all I'm going to do is put... Boiling water up to the halfway mark on this one pint. And put the lid on. Give it a little shake. They will expand and that's because of the steam. So make sure that you just watch for that so they don't explode. They will cope with the heat and it's just a good way of sterilising them. I've been doing this for years and I've never had a problem. And then just tip that into the next bottle. Let that cool off. And do the same thing again. And I will keep doing that for all the bottles that I plan to use today.
Now the reason I've got five one pint bottles and one two pint is because I want to keep some of the milk out to use now. So it'll go in my fridge. So this enables me to demonstrate to you how I make up the one pint to a two pint. Okay, so that's that done. These are now ready to go. Let them cool down for a second. Won't take long. So, this is for the purpose of storage. We're going to fill up these bottles to about there. Leave some space because liquids expand when they freeze. So I'm going to fill these five with milk as it comes out of this. did that one. Right, so these five are basically now ready to go into the freezer. So screw them up. When you store them, freeze them upright because over time these tops do lose a little bit of their seal but once they're fully frozen in the freezer you can do what you like with them, turn them upside down, jigsaw them into place depending on what you need. So those five are now done, they're ready to go into the freezer. Now I'm going to prep the milk that I want to keep out because I want to use some now in my fridge for tea and coffee etc. So I'm going to put all the rest of what's left in this bottle in here. Which is actually a little more than a pint because I didn't want to overfill these too much. That's bubbles there, the line is here. So what I'm now going to do is get some cold water and I'm going to fill that up pretty much to the top line. Now this method will only work if you are not fussy about your milk, I don't care. I just want something in my tea and coffee that means I'm not drinking black tea and coffee. So lid on, give it a little move around to mix it. One point of whole milk is now two pints of semi-skimmed. Now the reason these are in single pints is because of storage space. So when I've used this up and I need another one of these out, take it out the freezer the night before, in the morning when it's defrosted, pour it into this, top it up with water, put it in the fridge. This means that I'm not having to store a whole chunk of these. And that is how you turn six pints of milk into 12. I've discovered that Vinted don't just do clothes. Um, there's a whole, not surprisingly, there's a whole section for jewellery and I have pulled out some of my old jewellery bits that I don't want. I'm not much of a jewellery wearer, I've got the state of my hair today, blown around by Storm Debbie or whatever it's called. Um, but I get gifted stuff and I don't really wear jewellery anymore. The problem I have is that people don't always know what to get me, so I end up with very generic stuff. Some of which I will use, some of which I won't. And so the jewellery, some of it's stuff that I bought years and years ago and have just hung on to. And I'm going through a big declutter phase at the moment. And Vinted is so much easier to use than eBay. I don't have to faff around with auctions and, and the buyers deal with their own postage, which is fantastic. But I've also discovered that there's a whole like bathroom section for Vinted. So you can get rid of bathroom products 
that you don't want. I have quite a good selection of things that I've been gifted over the years. I don't think it's even that long ago. And it's not that I don't want it or I don't like it. It's purely that I get gifted bathroom stuff every year and I can't get through it fast enough because I'm quite careful about, you know, using, um, using my shower and the electric and the water. Everything is being frugally watched. So it takes me a long time to get through like a big bottle of body wash and things like that. And that's not because I'm a gross individual. It's just that I just can't get through it all. I really can't. So I'm going to show you what I've got because it's quite a nice little selection. Let's get rid of that because I've got one of those. Uh, right, so I'm going to turn you around and then we're going to see what we've got. So it's not focusing very well because now I've got the bubble wrap up. I don't get as much light in. Um, all sorts of stuff. Look, Bayliss and Harding. Massive great bottle of lovely shower stuff not going to use that i've got loads i got gifted some of these last year it's not really for me loads of body shop soap imperial leather don't know where they came from yeah loads of body shop soaps these i think will be great for christmas for people to put in like little stocking fillers and things there's like little um little things that go in the shower go in the bath little mini soaps all sorts of stuff um got a bunch of these this has never been opened these are expensive stuff actually um, the one of the, the the lady who I do the cleaning for she was having a bit of a clear out and she said she bought this and she meant to buy a body wash she didn't realize she didn't realize it was shampoo so instead of taking it back she's just stuck it in the cupboard god knows how much that cost so yeah little things like little stocking filler things and there's some of the jewellery things that I'm going to to do as well some pretty bracelets and I used to buy a lot of this stuff for photo shoots for things like that but I don't do much of that anymore so I'm going to get on a list some of this stuff or all of this stuff for cheap and then if people can find stocking fillers and I can do bundle deals I will because um could help people with a cost of living crisis if you could get like a nice big bottle of say this for a couple of quid that's going to be significantly cheaper than what it would cost in um in the shops something like that two or three quid maybe there's a nice little selection of uh shower and bath gels lovely very nice um and it means that i've got <laughs> like almost two shelves of space left and I'm not very good at decluttering. I don't do it very often and things build up and build up and then suddenly I'll have a massive splurge. So I've done the wardrobe, that's all done. Everything that I can get rid of has either been sold or is on vintage at the moment. So that's that dealt with. So now getting rid of all this Bratham stuff would be brilliant if I can do that. Um, so I'm gonna see, we'll see what we end up with. Um, some of this stuff is like still properly sealed. And I have, still have a load of other stuff which um, the packaging's knackered. So I don't think it's going to be very good to sell, but who knows. I think a lot of the stuff that I've seen already on Vinted looks like it's just unwanted gifts. Because people uh, can't think of what to get you. I'll get you something generic from Boots or Superdrug or the supermarket. I mean, I've done it. I do it to people who I don't know how to buy for, but you know you have to buy for them. People like my sister-in-law, I've never know what to get her. She doesn't have time for anything. She works, she looks after kids, she works, she looks after kids. And it's really hard to know what to get. My brother's easy, I'm just gonna get him loads of beer, beer selections I've mentioned before. And if I can get that electric vest replaced, my dad is already sorted. So it's really a case of just having a nice clear out and then this money can go towards what I buy for people for Christmas. So that's how we're going. I, I love Vinted. I've really fallen out of love with eBay as a seller. It's, I don't like, all the fees are ridiculous. Uh, Vinted is just so much easier as a seller. You don't get charged any fees and you don't even have to deal with the postage. I love it. And I've bought stuff off them as well and it's just as simple a process. So well recommended if you're, you're needing a clear out. The only thing is that it is an app. So you need to have um, a smartphone to be able to use it, but um, incredibly simple and easy to use. 
It's Tuesday morning. I'm going to keep this brief because I want to end this um, this little ramble. Tuesday did not start well. I went to pay my credit card bill and realised I was a day late. I thought that today was the 13th and it's actually the 14th. I only had £32 to pay in it because I haven't been using the card very much. Um, but it comes with a £12 fee for paying late. So, in the app, this is my Marbles credit card, by the way, which is a digital only. So I went in, I went to the uh, virtual chat thing, got myself put through to a person and explained. I kind of groveled and said, you know, I don't have enough money to pay for fees. I'm on universal credit um, and blamed the app for me not being able to get in. A slight fib, but not an entire fib. And I have never, ever failed to pay a credit card bill on time in my life. So I explained all of that, and they said, yeah, we'll just reverse the fees. They weren't bothered, because literally 8 o'clock <laughs> this morning, I was there laying in bed paying it. I'd been waiting for some payments to clear, because I couldn't work out whether they would count against me for that statement or the next one. Anyway, so they said, don't worry, we'll take the charge off your next statement. So, could have started bad and probably didn't. The saga of the heated vest is ongoing. I have emailed the person that I bought the jacket off and they gave me some advice. They said, Plug it into a mains with the USB, so like a phone charger. Plug it directly into the mains and see if it works. I've done that and it works. So that suggests that it may be that the power bank doesn't work. Now the power bank, I cannot get to fully charge. It's supposed to fully charge in something like four and a half hours, this power bank, which seems like a long time. And I've been charging it on and off since I got it last week and I cannot get it to go to full charge. And it does not work with the vest. The vest goes through its warm-up cycle and then it cuts out. And it's the battery, I think, that's cutting out because the vest does work when I got it plugged into a mains. So I think it's the power bank that's the problem. So I'm going to leave the power bank on charge all day. And if it doesn't go to a full charge, I'm going to tell them there's something wrong with it. because And it's also really heavy. I don't even like it. So I'm going to try and see if I can get my money back on that, return that, and then get a different one. It's really hard to find out what power banks are good. Um, you can pay for a really, really, really expensive one. But I, I, I've i often bought cheap electronics and had no problems with them. So something like a power bank, which is basically a battery that looks like a mobile phone, should not be difficult to get right. I'm going to test it with my mobile and see if it will charge my mobile because it's a multi-device power bank um, and see if it will charge that. But I'm beginning to think that it's the power bank, not the vest, that's the problem. Because when I plug the vest into the mains, as I say, it works and I've tested it for several hours and it definitely works. The buttons all work. It does what it's supposed to do. So... I think that's the problem. So that's my latest update on that. I will keep you posted on that. I haven't told the eBay person who sold me the vest yet that I don't think it's the vest of the problem. I'm going to wait and get another power bank and test that out first. So I think what I might do is just go and buy another power bank. I can put it on my credit card, test it out. If it works with the vest, then I can say to this person, your power bank isn't compatible with this product. So... That's, that's my update for Tuesday. I'm not going to do... Oh, one other thing I was going to say about today was this time last week, I went into Morrison's on the Tuesday evening and I bought like four packs of their cookies because they were really cheap. And I said at the time, I don't feel guilty about this. I don't care what you think about me. Well, and I said, um, these will last me a week. Well, it's... Tuesday morning, and I still have, it's either a cookie or two cookies left. So I have been really good, actually. But you get a lot of cookies in a bag, and I've got to be honest with you, I wish I hadn't bought them, because they're really hard to not 
eat. They're really addictive. There's too much sugar in them. They're incredibly unhealthy. I'm not going to buy them again, even though they're really cheap, because I just couldn't stop eating them. I couldn't put them down. It's just dreadful. They're really unhealthy. And I'm beginning to wonder whether going into Morrison's on a Tuesday evening after seven is a good idea, because the only stuff that's on discount is the unhealthy stuff. So I might, what I might do tonight is go before I go to do the cleaning. So I'll be going in there about half five and see if I can get veg. I don't want any more of that bakery stuff. It's just hideous. I can feel that my weight is going up. Um, I'm struggling to get my steps in because it's too cold to stand up and walk. I am literally um, hot water bottle strapped to my middle and I'm underneath my slanket from about five o'clock because it's too cold to be out in the room. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm going to end this here. It's a bit of Tuesday. There's lots of other interesting stuff coming up. So, um, enjoy. <laughs> Run out of things to say. It's too early on a Tuesday morning and because of the thing with my credit card this morning, it's just my brain is fuzzed all over the place and I now need to get into a good work stream for the rest of the day and be productive so that I can forget all about it. Speak to you soon.